Hello, my lovelies. I hope you're all doing so well. Today feels like a DIY kind of day for me, particularly because yesterday I went looking for fabric and I found the most beautiful fabric. Look at this. It's so, look, this color is just incredible. It's a stretch velvet. And when I saw it, I immediately thought flare pants. So this is my DIY project for the day. Um, if you live in Vintook, go ahead and make your way down to Downtown Bliss. This is where I got this fabric. They have this stretch velvet in a couple of other colors. There was a wine red that I really loved as well. Um, and also this beautiful like emerald pine green they also had something between like a royal and a navy blue a mustardy yellow and just go ahead and look i'm i ended up selecting this one because how could you just look at this color and and let it go i i couldn't do it so i've got some of this and today i'm going to be making some flare pants now i don't work with patterns. I think if you've watched any of my other clothing DIY videos, then by now we know that. <laughs> so I've got a pair of pants that has got a similar shape to what I have in mind. I'm just going to be tweaking the overall thing a little bit. So I want my flare pants to be a bit more flare than the pants that I'm using as my stencil, I guess you could call it. And I want mine to be high waisted. So let me show you the pants that I'm going to use and then also show you a little trick um, that you can keep in mind if you ever decide to make pants of your own and you're not using a pattern but you do have a pair of pants on hand. Just how to get them to fit nicely in the groin and the waist area. So here are the pants that I'm going to be using. All right, so these are my pants. You can see they have a little bit of a flare at the bottom and I want to extend that flare so when I lay it down on the fabric and draw the outline with my chalk I'm just going to um, draw the flare out a little bit wider so when you are using actual pants to as you know as a substitute for a pattern you want to make sure that um, it fits properly in the groin and the waist so here's the trick that my mom taught me okay the side facing you, this part, is the front of the pants. So if I take the ends and let them meet at the back, it means that the front part of the groin is the one that I can get a good that I can pull out. Okay, so this would be the loop of the front. Okay, it has a little bit more of a a loopiness than the back part because the back has to go all the way around your bum okay so the front loop looks like that and if I do it the other way around so this still is the front of the pants if I then bring it to the front and pull the groin part out the back these this is the back of the pants if you're doing the groin area so you can see it's longer it doesn't make as much of a scoop and it has enough space to cover your whole bum. <laughs> All right, so that's just something to keep in mind. If you don't get um, this area nicely fitted, that's when the pant starts to pull down at the back or just pull up in funny places. So these are the ones I'm going to use and let's just get right to it. So there's my fabric. I'm just stretching it to see which direction is the most stretchy and it is this horizontal way now I know exactly which way to lay my pants so I've got my fabric down and I'm going to take one side and fold it over to meet the other so that I've doubled it up vertically this way when I cut my pants I've got both pieces cut at the same time take some time here to make sure that you've really lined up your fabric nicely and that there are no folds so that when you cut it's easier all right so there my pants are laid down I'm just going to outline the edge of my pants all the way around um, I'm going to point out here how far my flare is going to go and as I'm going to outline I will give myself a little bit extra space for seam allowance and I'm just using some regular chalk and dotting out my 
lined where I'm going to be cutting out the pants. I'm just going to do that all the way around. There you can see it's all done and you can also see how far I've extended. I like to just mark which is front and back for later so that once it's cut out I know exactly which piece is which. Alright, so now I'm folding it around the back so that the back part of the groin area is the one that I'm going to be exposing. And um, this is like what I was explaining right in the beginning. And you'll see once both pieces are done, you'll see that it's what the difference is. I'm going to be using this gap um, for my second piece just to draw it. It's a nice way to save on fabric. So again, I'm just going to do the same thing. Dot all along the sides so that both sides fit on that piece and they are the same. All right, so there we go. Just making sure that I'm marking off the line of my pieces, which are now complete. So I've got the front and the back panels and I'm just going to cut them out. This is probably one of the best tools I've ever bought. It makes cutting out the fabric so easy, this roller cutter. So now I just need to go along the line that I've marked for both front and back. I do have a piece of cardboard underneath my fabric, just by the way, to protect the floor when I cut. All right, so something I didn't show was how I'm just meeting up my back pieces and sewing the front, the two front panels together, and then alternatively the two front, the two back panels together so that they are connected and will look a little something like this. Okay, so now the back two legs are together, the front two legs are together, and I can line up the groin points. So I'm going to put the two pieces right sides facing each other and the wrong sides of the fabric are going to be out. And I'm just finding those two groin points of the fabric. I'm going to then line them up and sew along the inside edge of each leg. That would be the thigh area, the inner thigh down to the ankle. So I'm starting at those inner points, the inner groin points, connecting them, and then just making sure that I'm sewing all the way down the inner length of the pant leg on both sides. Once that's done, you're going to do the same with the outer side of the leg so that you close up the legs completely until you are left with the bottom edge which you're then going to hem and sew all the way around. I'm doing the same as well with the waistband. So all you need to do for these pieces is just to fold the fabric over twice so that you get a nice clean edge and then sew it closed. I'm using a zigzag stitch for this fabric because it is stretchy and that means that you do just need a little bit of give with your stitching. And here's the final product. I love them so 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 much that color I think is my favorite thing about them first of all and the flare ended up being just exactly what I wanted uh, my sewing machine actually was giving me a whole lot of technical difficulties yesterday so it should have been a super quick project of let's say maximum 45 minutes to an hour ended up taking me like right up until the evening it was so frustrating but if all your equipment <laughs> is working smoothly and everything goes well, then it shouldn't take you more than an hour to make something absolutely from scratch. And I'm really tempted to go and get some of the other stretch velvet fabrics because they really, um, they really do make the perfect flare pants. And while I was busy last night, I actually took some other fabric that I bought and made another pair of pants which I will show you in 
one of my posts on my Instagram page. So make sure that you're following what she's wearing today to see the second pair of pants that I made. So thanks so much, you guys, for watching. I really appreciate that you took a few minutes in your day to join me. And go ahead and like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it if you did that. And until next time, bye.